Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to run you through the entire Christian Dior perfume range. Now, just as I said when I ran you through the whole Chanel perfume range, this is not going to be a super short video, so I recommend you get comfortable, maybe make yourself a cup of tea, which is what, exactly what I've done, and um, settle in because I'm just going to take you through everything. So there are nine different perfume types or groups or families or whatever you want to call them within the Christian Dior perfume range. Some are really well known bestsellers, some perhaps you might not have heard of. So I'm just going to take you through everything starting with perhaps the most popular and most well known which is J'adore by Dior. This came out in 1999 and for a long time has had Charlize Theron as the um, face of the perfume. The adverts are everywhere at Christmas time and Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and it is a consistent bestseller. And I guess because of its success there are a whole bunch of different versions of it that you can buy. But the normal Shador um, comes in Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette versions and the notes that you get in here are predominantly jasmine but there's also some nice sort of fruity warm notes in here like pear and sort of melon um, but it is quite a floral strong perfume so definitely for one one for people who really like floral perfume. You can then get J'adore Enjoy, um, which comes in an eau de toilette. Now, this is actually quite a different fragrance, even though the bottle and the packaging all looks very similar. And to someone who's perhaps new to it, they could easily pick up the wrong one here, um, but they are really quite different. So J'adore Enjoy, predominantly is quite a salty perfume and then it has like a peachy undertone and again it has the jasmine in there but it's like a salty jasmine with the peach it is quite different um, so I definitely one that you should try before buying and perhaps if you've had Jador for a long time you fancy something different then perhaps give this one a go. So the next version of Jador is Jador Absolu. Um, this is, as you would expect, quite a stronger version of J'adore. Again, it's got the jasmine in, but it's also more on um, the tuber rose and the rose um, side of things. So this is basically like super floral version of J'adore. So if you love the floral side of J'adore, then J'adore Absolute is definitely one you should try. You've then got J'adore L'Or, so L um, apostrophe O-R. Um which is a sort of vanilla sweeter version of Jador. So along with vanilla and the floral jasmine, you've also got tonka bean in there, which makes them feel much warmer, kind of like a Christmassy, like warmer, wintery version of Jador. You've then got Jador Touche, um, which again has the jasmine to keep it consistent, but this is a bit woodier. So you've got sandalwood, and you've also got musk in here, so it's like a musky, woody version of Jador. And then finally, you have Jador Extract, um, which is a much um, stronger version of Jador and is very strong on the rose and also the ylang ylang. Um, so a, quite a unique smell, definitely one I'd recommend trying to try before you buy. So essentially there are lots of different Shadors, very easy to get confused um, and I know they have a bit of a, like a niche um, cult following for some of these other less well-known versions but if in doubt, if you're getting it as a gift, I'd probably just get Shador, normal, eau de toilette or eau de parfum. <laughs> okay, so the second item on the list is Miss Dior. Now Miss Dior is quite interesting because um, Dior originally released Miss Dior many, many decades ago, and they still sell that original fragrance, um, uh, it's, but they now call it Miss Dior Original, and it's a very sort of heavy floral, cheaper fragrance. It smells like quite an old-fashioned smell, and um, I don't think it's even sold in every concession. Um, it comes in one size and it's basically bought by people that have worn it since it was created in, I don't know, the 50s or 60s or something. Um, so not 
um, something that not a lot of people know about Miss Dior. But then um, about 10, 15 years ago, they sort of recreated this Miss Dior brand and they now have Miss Dior Eau de Parfum, Eau de Toilette and a pure perfume version. The Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette are slightly different. I've done a detailed review of the difference, which I'll link below. Um, but essentially they both have a sort of vanilla, rosy vibe to them. Um, whereas the Eau de Toilette's probably less vanilla -y, more fresher, the Eau de Parfum's a bit sweeter and stronger as you'd expect. There are then two versions of Miss Dior. So you've got Miss Dior Absolutely Blooming, which brings out the rose of the Miss Dior fragrance, but also has some like fruity notes in there. So a sort of like a red berry Christmassy type fruity smell with the rosy floral smell, really nice. And then you've also got Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet, which again is the rose, but it's also got lots of peony smell in there as well. So it is kind of like the name explains it, like a bouquet of flowers. Um, so really bringing out the floral side of the Miss Dior fragrance. Okay, so third is the poison range of perfumes. Again, these really do have quite a big cult following. So in terms of the ones that have been around for quite a while, you have um, Poison by Dior. This is a spicy, tuberose, heavy, heavy perfume, almost aromatic. Um, if you like um, YSL opium, if you like Clinique aromatics, this is probably one for you. It's a strong, heavy smell. You then have Pure Poison, which is the white version of the poison bottle. This is a lighter version of normal poison and has more floral notes in it. There's jasmine, there's gardenia, but I wouldn't say it was a light perfume as you would expect from a floral perfume because it does have those heavy, like ambery notes in it, which remind me of original poison. And it is quite strong when people wear it. You then have hypnotic poison, which is the red one. Now this is, ideally named because I do find this perfume like hypnotic. Um, imagine you're going into like an, a sort of Arabian um, sort of heavily fragranced Aladdin's cave or something. It's very 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 heavy vanilla, um, very very sweet, very intense and I um, when people wear it and I'm near them, I sometimes find it a bit sickly. It's so strong. Um, but people that love vanilla love this fragrance because it's so in your face. Great value for money if you love vanilla fragrance because this is going to make everything smell of it. Very good perfume. And then more recently, they have released P Poison Girl. This comes in Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette versions. And this is kind of like a sweet vanilla with the rose in there. There's also quite a bit of almond. So if you're a fan of the almond fragrance, I would try this one. Um, it's kind of more along the lines of a lot of the other perfumes that are similar um, sort of color and theme, sort of pinky purple, like your um, YSL Mon Mon Paris or your Jimmy Choo's. It's kind of meant to appeal to that type of market. And then they more recently released Poison Girl Unexpected, which is a much lighter version, floral, and also ginger notes in here, which is quite unusual in a perfume. Okay, so fourth is the Addict, um, Dior Addict range. Um, they've had lots of different versions of Addict, but now they've sort of consolidated it and there's just a few. So original Addict comes in Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum, and this is a spicy perfume. It's got vanilla in there as well, so it's kind of along the same lines as Poison, um, but less aromatic and more just, he like, strong, heavy. It's really hard to describe. And then you can also get um, Dior Addict Eau Fresh, which is really quite different and is like a tangy floral type perfume, um, not particularly similar to normal Addict. Um, the bottle's much lighter, shows that it's a lighter perfume, um, but the two are quite different even though they share the Addict name. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go into the probably lesser known perfumes that are still sold by Dior and still have quite a following. So number five is Joy by Dior. This just comes as an Eau de Parfum and essentially is has a lot of the jasmine that J'adore has, but it's also got woody undertones. And when you first spray it, you get some nice like lime and orange type citrusy smells. Um, but fundamentally, this is like a jasmine perfume. And it's just one of those perfumes that's been worn um, by people for a long time and has that kind of following. Number six is along the same lines in terms of the following, June by Dior. Again, only comes in one size and is an eau de toilette. This is a woody perfume. So if you like those woody tones, then June is definitely one to try. You've got aldehyde in here, like Chanel number no. five, and then the woody, sandal woody type tones. So it's kind of along the Chanel number no. five version, but perhaps a little bit more woody. Next is Dolce Vita, which is an eau de toilette. This is a cinnamon perfume, so quite unusual, not many cinnamon perfumes out there. Number eight is Escale a Portofino. I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, basically, this is quite cool in that it's basically like a Mediterranean vibe perfume. So it's got lots of citrus in here and I think it's kind of supposed to smell like a beautiful summer's day in the Mediterranean. Um, it comes in a really pretty bottle and I think this is just a really nice perfume for the summer. And then finally, you have a range called Le Creations de Monsieur Dior. And there are six different perfumes in this category that all smell different um, but they all have the same bottle and they just have like different colored liquid in them and obviously a different name so let me take you through them now you've got diorissimo which is a lily of the valley fragrance you've got dior essence which is oriental fragrance you've got dior ling which is a floral but also leathery fragrance you've got diorella which is jasmine again dior love using jasmine in perfumes You've got Dior Eau Fresh, which is a sort of green um, perfume with some orangey citrus notes in. And then lastly, you've got Forever and Ever Dior, which is such a cute perfume. It's like a florally rose perfume. Um, it's really quite weak, but if you are looking for a fragrance for someone who likes rosy floral things, um, but doesn't want something that's heavy at all, wants something that's quite weak, then I just think this is the most beautiful gift. And it's so unusual, hardly anyone's ever heard of it. And I just think it's really sweet. I love the packaging, I love the name, I love the smell, it's so nice. So that is my rundown of the mm, Dior perfume range. I have done more detailed reviews of a lot of these perfumes, so all the links should be down below. Um, but I hope you found this useful and helpful. Um, let me know what you think, if you've tried any of these, or if you did find this helpful, let me know. I'd love to get your feedback. But that's it, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon, bye.